Hey guys, welcome to today's episode and we've got the Jen Stevens with us and she is one of my favorite people to talk about with fasting. We are both like so on the same page on so many things and so we're so excited. All right, well, we are going to go right into some listener questions if that works for you. So this is from Mary from Southport, North Carolina. So I've mainly been doing four, three for a few months now because that has worked for me, but that was before I went into menopause and now I'm not losing. I feel like I'm actually gaining. I won't weigh because I'm too scared to see what it is, but I can tell with clothes and picks. So maybe if I just, I'm doing two longer days. Okay. Now I'm going to stop you right there. This is not a fasting problem, Mary. This is a menopause problem. And so you don't need to readjust your fasting in any way, shape, or form. What you need to do is find a doctor who understands hormone replacement therapy and talk to that doctor about hormone replacement therapy. Because if you look at most women, all the women in the world, I'm not talking about intermittent fasting women. I'm talking about all the females in the entire world. Women gain weight after menopause. That is what our bodies do. Why is that? We Well, we store better. We, our metabolism slow down. We, our blood sugar control gets worse. My waist got bigger. You know, I was like in denial. I was telling myself, I'm Jen Stevens. I do intermittent fasting. I've been maintaining my weight since 2015. I'm not menopause. I'm sailing through menopause. And I pretty much did sail through menopause, but then my blood sugar control was worse. My waist went up two inches from the lowest. And I have a friend, thank goodness, who's an OBGYN. And I saw her in June and she said, you know, that's what's going to happen. You're going to age. And, you know, we were sold the wrong information about hormone replacement therapy from based on faulty, faulty interpretation of faulty studies. And so people are afraid of hormone replacement therapy, but luckily my friend understands it. And so we need to continue to have these estrogen and progesterone for sleep, for blood sugar control, for muscle mass maintenance. For bone maintenance, it's more than just your weight, but your weight is a symptom of it. If you are struggling with your weight post-menopause, all that other stuff is also going on behind the scenes. You're probably losing muscle mass, bone density. Your blood sugar control is probably terrible. It's going to lead to worse metabolic problems as you age. Find an OBGYN who understands bioidentical hormone replacement therapy um, a great suggestion that we heard from an o, from an OBGYN, she said, if you can't find one, go to a local compounding pharmacy in your area and ask them who writes those prescriptions. They know, and then they can tell you what doctor to go to. So if you're trying to fight your body on the other side of menopause, you're not going to win until you get your hormones balanced. You know, there's no fasting magic regimen that's going to re- redo your estrogen and progesterone that's you know fasting is amazing for hormones but it does not regenerate the sex hormones that you lose through aging it's Mm -hmm. not going to do that and no one ever has said that it will so you've got to replace those hormones that that are no longer being made after your ovaries are shutting down and all that's happening so this is not a fasting problem mary yes (laughs) good one Okay, this next one is from Josh Henry in Phoenix, Arizona. Does anyone do fast over 24 hours? I was never able to do them because of low energy, headaches, nausea. Upping my water and taking fasting electrolytes was key for me. Just completed my first 36-hour fast and feel great. Have a great weekend, everyone. And then I wanted to talk about any tips for a longer fast. So well, if someone says, I want to go longer, what would your your tips for that? Well, be? the alternate daily fasting protocol is very well researched. And, and the key is, you know, if you're really struggling, it sounds like you're not fat adapted because if you're fat adapted, it's it's not a struggle. To And so someone who's really struggling with that and feeling like they're not fat adapted, really check your fast and make sure you're fasting clean. You know, are you perhaps having flavored electrolytes, they're they're going to make it harder, not easier to fast. Are you perhaps putting a little cream in your coffee? Are you using supplements that are breaking the fast? Are you vaping? That's when you know, a lot of people are vaping these days. If it's flavored, that that's going to make it harder to fast. So once you are fat adapted, you should not have trouble. You know, yeah, you might have a little hunger pang right around when your body is making that transition into ketosis. But if you just stay busy on the other side of that, your body is bam, it's it's making fuel or it's turning your stored fat into ketones. You have good um, 
energy in your brain. It should feel really good. And so if you've been doing intermittent fasting for a while and you were unable to fast past, you know, 24 hours, really see if you could possibly be breaking your fast in some way that you're not expecting because the clean fast will make a lot of difference there. But I I have a whole chapter in Fast Feast Repeat about alternate daily fasting and those um, strategies. And you really do want to be fat adapted before you try that. But once you once you are and you can do the daily fast with no trouble, there's nothing wrong with doing a 36 to 42 hour fast. Then you need to make sure that after that, though, you follow that with what we call an up day. And that is a day where you have at least a six to eight hour window where you have at least two full meals following that longer fast. And that is where a lot of people go wrong. The research on alternate day fasting They were not doing the fasting Olympics. They were not just fasting, 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 more fasting. They didn't like stop their long fast, have one meal and do another long fast. They did, you know, like, let's say a 36 hour fast and then a 12 hour eating period. They didn't even call them eating, eating windows. They just had a day where you fasted and then the next day your eating was unrestricted. So the worst thing you can do if you're trying to do longer fasts is then restrict after the long fast. You need to have that up day, that metabolic boost day. That keeps your body from thinking, oh, no, there's no food. I'm going to starve. I better slow slow everything down. The up day is the key um, to keeping your metabolism going. So, again, this is all explained along with the research and fast feast repeat in the ADF chapter. Do you guys struggle with brain fog or having difficulty focusing? I know I do. Do you struggle with recalling names or dates or where you left things? Well, I've got good news for you. Newtopia, powered by Bi Optimizers, has created a brand new one of a kind product called Kala Genius. It has collagen, cocoa, cacao, different kinds of mushrooms. It's awesome. Kala Genius is delicious. It's sweetened with stevia. It tastes like a rich chocolate elixir. So when you want something sweet, just mix it up with a little bit of water or milk or almond milk, whatever you like, and enjoy. You can also mix it with your morning coffee. Now, you know I always take care of you guys. And so my listeners, if you go to newtopia.com slash genius or use wasteaway10 during your checkout, you're going to save 10%. That's newtopia.com slash genius and use wasteaway10 during your checkout. Do it now and your brain will thank you. Yeah, so for me... I used to do a lot of longer fast. So that was kind of before I started going into pre-menopause. Yeah. And I was doing three-day fast. I actually wrote a book called Fasting to Freedom, which is all about kind of like strongholds that you have where you're kind of like fasting kind of in biblical times where you're like really praying. Like, you know, if you think about in the Bible, they talked about, you know, people fasting for all kinds of different reasons. Obviously Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, Moses fasted. And so I wrote that book. And while I was writing that book, I was doing massive amount of fasting and, you know, it is such a stress on your body. And what I've realized is that myself over the last two years, because of, you know, our company, um, has we're now in 20 states and so wow. it was just ridiculous like for me to try to you know open up in so many states it just wasn't like to do it that fast you know right. it just wasn't like the smart idea so it just put my body under so much stress and i really wasn't able to fast like i did so i basically every day fast around i eat around one o'clock sometimes two o'clock and i end around six o'clock so that's kind of a a normal day for me and i've done that for years and years mm-hmm. and years around that time frame and that i can always do right but when i wanted to add in you know these longer fasts and like i said when i was writing that book fasting to freedom i was fasting three days seven days i mean yeah. not like it was easy it was a struggle don't get me wrong but I was having trouble even doing a 24 hour fast. Like, well, your body because rebels. I'm with so much stress. And yeah, your it body will not do to it. that. It, it's not good for us to overfast. And that is something that, you know, in, in some parts of the intermittent fasting community out there, not mine, because in mine, we have a very, very consistent message about that. But in, in some intermittent fasting communities that you'll find on Facebook or other places, 
you know, they, they have the theory that there's no such thing as too much fasting. And, um, I don't agree with that one single I don't bit. either. No, I've seen so many people, you know, back in the day when we first all started out well before I wrote my first book, Delayed on Deny. And, um, so in like 2015, 2016, as we're going along, people started, you know, experimenting with, oh, we're fasting, let's just fast. And, um, the people who had the willpower to do like, let's say a 21 day fast or something, right? Like they were fasting like superstars. It never ended well. Those people always ended up binging and they would gain back way more weight than they ever lost. But then they felt like a failure. They felt like, what is wrong with me? Why am I a failure? Well, it's because your body fights back with over restriction. You know, there's a study, um, that I talk about in, in my books where they, they followed people for 72 hours of fasting. And these were not people who were intermittent fasters. This is just take somebody off the street, have them fast for 72 hours. What they found is over the 72 hours, let's imagine everybody comes in, here's their baseline metabolic rate, right? So they're starting off at a baseline and they're starting to fast over that 72 hours, metabolic rate goes up. It goes up, it goes up, it goes up, it goes up. Then it reaches a peak and then it starts to go down again. So at the end of the 72 hours, which is when they stopped the fast, metabolic rate was still a little bit higher than it had been at the beginning, but it was on a downward trajectory. So that, you know, most things, if we think about that, if it's on a downward trajectory, it's probably going to keep going down. So when you keep fasting and keep fasting, why would your body slow your metabolic rate down? Because it doesn't want you to die. It thinks you're having a famine. Your body doesn't know that you just read a book about fasting and now you're going to fast till you get to your bikini body. Your body is like, oh my God, there's literally no food coming in. We better slow things down. So in the early part of your fast, why would your body kind of speed things up? Well, it's like, all right, go find food, go find food. It's your body, you know, giving you the energy, giving you the the ability to go find the food that you need. But then 72 hours, the food's not coming in. You start to slow things down. And Keep in mind, that is one 72-hour fast in isolation. Now imagine it's somebody that's in one of these communities who's doing repeated 72-hour fasts. We don't have data on that. What is that doing? We don't know. But I know what I've seen. I've seen those people suddenly start binging. And again, why would you start binging? Because your body is sending you those signals you know, if you've ever white knuckled it through a diet and then all of a sudden you like find yourself in the pantry eating everything and you're like, what's wrong with me? Why am I so weak? That's your body that just sent you those powerful signals that you better eat. It's really, really hard to fight our bodies. So over fasting, if you find yourself in a fasting and then binging pattern, that is a warning sign from your body that you're doing too much fasting. And that is why alternate daily fasting with 30, like a 36, 12 kind of approach. 36 hours of fasting, a 12 hour eating window where you refeed your body well and your body knows that you're well nourished. Then you do another 36 hour fast. That approach is well researched. People do very well with it. Um, It doesn't slow your metabolic rate, but the key is those up days. Like if you did a 47 hour fast, ate one meal, then another 47 hour fast, that is not alternate daily fasting. That's over fasting, that's over restriction. So your body lets you know if you ever start feeling the urge to binge. That is a sign you're not nourishing your body well. Well, one of the things I did is I took some blood work and I realized that my progesterone levels mm-hmm. were really, really low. My estrogen Well, yeah, your body low. doesn't want you to procreate if you're starving to death, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, people don't realize is that when you fast, your progesterone levels go down. So if One of the biggest aha moments I had was, and I'd love, what I want to do is maybe do like a 48 hour fast now, because I'm telling you, it's been a long time since I've done a 48 hour fast. I haven't been able, I literally haven't been able to do it. I'm barely able to do a 24 hour fast now. And here, I mean, I was fasting queen. I was doing three day and then a seven day and then this, you know, and, and now I am on bioidentical hormones for yep. progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen. My yeah. my hormone levels were so in the tank. And I would love to now that my my 
levels are back up, I'd love to try to do a little bit of a longer fast and see if yeah, I can that do good. it. Yeah. Try and see, I I like to eat every day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I understand the, the reason to do alternate daily fasting. You don't need to do it. There's no mm-hmm. reason to do alternate daily fasting unless you feel like your metabolism has been lowered through over fasting or over dieting. You know, paradoxically, this is a great way to boost that metabolism. You have the alternate daily fasting because you have the update. It only boosts your metabolism though if you have a good update. You know, the over the update is supposed to be slight overeating. Now we're not picking out. We're just having slight overeating. The um, research on ADF they told the participants to eat 125 percent of their normal caloric needs on the update. So they were slightly overeating. They weren't eating like double the amount of food they needed, just slightly. And that was that metabolic boost because we know through overfeeding studies that if you overeat your metabolic rate goes up. So you have the the 36 hour fast to burn fat and then slight overeating on the um, the up day to boost your metabolic rate. So that is a great reason to do ADF if you feel like your metabolic rate might be um, damaged. Another really good reason to do ADF is if you know that you're insulin resistant because the clean fast, a 36 hour clean fast is really going to bring your insulin levels down. And so it's really good. You know, it's, it's a healing um, way to to fast. It's really good for you in that regard. Like if you have PCOS, for example, alternate daily fasting is a good protocol for that. But, you know, some people have the mistaken thought that you must do 24 to 36 hour fast to have autophagy. No, we have increased autophagy um, with our daily fasting. You don't need to push it for some, you know, mythical benefit that, we can't even measure in in you. We, you know, we don't have like an mm-hmm. autophagy meter, but we know that it's, um, you know, it's upregulated when you're fasting. So even your daily fast is good for that. Yeah. And for me, it's really, I'm really a proponent of like biblical fasting. And like, I just feel like things like massive things have happened in my life from doing like, you know, a longer fast and just really like spending that time with God. So that's yeah. kind of one of the things that's a good that I've been in, but yeah. So that's, but I just, I really haven't been able to do it. So we'll see if I can now that I've added these hormones. All right. This is Tina from Shelby, Kentucky. Okay. I need help peeps. I've had a sinus allergy crud. I refer to as the Ohio Valley funk. I've had this dang cough (laughs) for three weeks. And every time I reach for a Hall's cough drop, I know I'm screwing up my fast. Is there anything I can do to calm a cough that will not mess with my fast? Well, that's tricky. Um, You know, sometimes when you're sick, you have to set fasting aside and take something. That's just the way that it is. Um, You know, you just sometimes have to do that. But I don't know that I've really even had a cough like that. So I'm not really maybe the best person to ask because I don't I haven't had to deal with that. I can't even think of the last time I've had a persistent cough thanks to fasting. Um, I did have COVID in 2021 and I, I guess I did then, but I just, I'd like gargled with salt water and it really me, was over. I just do soon. hot water. Hot yeah. Water. Hot, I drink hot water. I don't it drink really hot water with helps. salt in it normally, but when I was sick, a little sprinkle of salt helped soothe my throat. But that really, that's the only time I've been sick is when I had COVID and that was, you know, it didn't last. It didn't hang on. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, just do the best you can with it. See if the hot water, a little hot salt water will help you. And two, um, two days is not going to kill you. If, no, if it's exactly. two days, it's not going to kill you. You have to set fasting aside to take medicine. You just have to do it. You have to do it. And it'll, it'll get better eventually. So it is just so hard to overstate how important magnesium is for all aspects of our health. Everyone is talking about how critical magnesium is. And there is a long list of symptoms and diseases that can be eased or even treated with magnesium. So way back when, doctors used magnesium for all kinds of conditions like arrhythmia, constipation, preeclampsia, even seizures. And now it's kind of used as a last resort. It's absolutely essential to our health and our well-being. This is a huge problem because magnesium deficiency can increase your risk for all these different diseases. So I am really a big advocate of getting as many nutrients as we can through a well-balanced diet. Like that is super important. But I really feel like right now that food alone 
isn't going to work because our soil is so overworked and so mineral depleted that it's just lacking so much magnesium. Fortunately, Bi Optimizers has the solution. Their magnesium is the only one that has seven types of magnesium, and it's specially formulated to reach every tissue in your body. So go to magbreakthrough.com slash waste away. That's magbreakthrough.com slash waste away and get 10% off and use the code waste away to get your magnesium. All right. This one is a strange one. It's from Shannon in Sacramento, California. (laughs) Okay. She says, Bring it on. <laughs> she says, I'm currently doing a reverse diet to get in maintenance, but at the same time, I want to do a one day a week, 24 hour fast and once a month, 36 hour fast. Should I adjust my daily calories to level out the reverse diet weekly goal or just not worried about worry about the missed calories on those fasting days? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm not a fan of calorie counting at all. So I'm not going to tell you how to count your calories. No. (laughs) And if you want to know why, there's a whole chapter on that in Fast, Feast, Repeat. It sounds like to me, though, um, alternate day fasting would get you the same place, you know, with the, the whole concept of reverse dieting is just what I talked about a minute ago about, you know, boosting your metabolic rate by having, you know, the overfeeding, right? That That's what reverse dieting is. So if you've been doing too much low calorie dieting, your metabolic rate has slowed. How do you counteract that? You overeat. So that's the whole point of the reverse dieting. So you could do alternate daily fasting right now and, it, and you don't have to count another single calorie ever again. Do a 36 mm-hmm. hour fast, have an up day. And you might not need to do it strictly every other day, like down, up, down, up, down, up. You could maybe throw in two down days a week, each one followed by an up day. And then, so like, let's say you had Monday, a a full fast, up day on Tuesday. Wednesday could be just whatever daily eating window you prefer. Then maybe a down day on Thursday, so like a 36 hour fast. Then Friday would be an up day. And then, you know, Saturday and Sunday, those two days could be any eating window that you prefer. So that would be two longer fasts a week, each one followed by an update. That's the only rule. Anytime you do a longer fast, anytime a fast covers two overnight periods, you need to have an update after that. And and that is great for metabolic boost. That's what I would do. I don't want to count another thing ever. Like I'm doing, I'm doing Zoe right now, like I said, and you have to log your meals for a few of the days just so they can see how your body responds to the foods. And you're not even like trying to count the calories or count the macros or anything. They just want to know what you ate so they can see how your body responded to that with your CGM. And so for three days, I had to put all my food in and it didn't give me calorie counts or anything, but it just, I had to like log it and it made me want to die because I just can't do I can't. I never want to log my feet again. All right, last question. This is from Crash Joe. I was doing so well and slowly I have gained some weight back. I'm not sure how I did it, but I did help. So, I mean, we get this all the time because people are like, I was doing so good, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I have got like 10 questions on this and they're all give all their basic things of all the things. And I was doing this and I was losing weight and I was doing great. And now I'm just slowly gaining. I don't know what I did. I feel like I'm doing everything the same. So what would be, give us like the top five reasons why you would say this person was like, I was losing, 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 losing. And now I'm either staying where I was or I'm actually gaining weight back. Yep. What are those reasons? For me, I always know when I look back, I like, you know, cause I've, I've been in, in maintenance since 2015, but maintenance doesn't mean your weight is steady, 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 steady. That's, that's false. Anybody who thinks maintenance means you weigh the exact same thing every single day. And now you're at maintenance. That's, that's not how it works. Maintenance means your weight has seasons of ups and downs and the way, you know, you've got the ups because now suddenly, oops, you're on honesty pants are tight and you're like, Ooh, I had to really, let me see what did I do for the past few months. And I mean, it might be menopause in which case it isn't anything you did. It's something your body's doing. We also are finding after COVID, by the way, have you heard that people are finding unexplained weight gain after COVID just FYI. Um, Like, like if you had all of a sudden crazy amounts of sudden weight gain, 
think back if it happened right after you had COVID, because it, there's some some chatter that it's maybe affecting your gut microbiome or causing some other metabolic changes. You know, that still we don't know for sure what it might be. But anecdotally, we have heard that from a lot of people. They've been mainly people who have been weight stable, like people who have been in maintenance for for a long time, and they really know they didn't change anything, but all of a sudden their weight just skyrocketed up. I would I would look to COVID for that, but I mean I don't know the answer to that because we don't really know what what the problem it's caused. You can't solve a problem if you don't know what the problem is, um, or you know what what's causing it. Um, but for me, like I said, I always have been able to put my finger on what it was, and it's too many cheese plates, too many nights with wine. It's always that, or I think that I've been doing the same thing. But when I think about it, oh, I really had a little window creep. Window creep happens. Maybe your weekends are more relaxed than they used to be, but you're not really realizing it until you look back. You're like, you know, we did go out to eat every single weekend for the past two months. And I've been, you know, eating all this restaurant food or traveling or something like that. You can usually figure out what it is if you look back really honestly and and figure out what what you were doing differently. Um, If you find that that happens, maybe pull out a fasting app. Maybe you need to track your fasts, your eating windows for a little while just to really see. Because a lot of times people will say, well, I haven't been doing anything different. We're like, all right, track your fast for a little while. Then they realize their fasts were a little shorter than they thought they were. Their windows were a little longer than they thought they were. That window creep does happen. But again, also think about the food choices. You know, have you really been having, you know, more cheese plates? And you know, the first time I really noticed that for me, I'd been to New York City and I had a delicious charcuterie and wine a couple of the nights that I was there. So then I came home and like recreated that every single night. This was in like 2019. I was recreating these elaborate charcuterie boards and having a glass of wine every single night. My honesty pants got tight and I'm like, oh, I guess I should stop doing that. So I I just switched out what I was eating and then my pants were fine again. So those those are my best tips for that. Mm. And I agree. I think that for me, Almost always, if I look at it, yeah. one one other thing is not walking as much. I like to walk yeah. around three and a half miles every day and I do work out, but sometimes I'm not, if I walk three and a half miles every day, my weight is about five pounds letter, lighter than normal. Um, so I've got to do that three and a half miles a day. I feel so much better, yeah. but like, let's say I just, you know, we're on vacation or we're doing this and I get out of the habit of doing that every single day. I'm definitely gaining weight. Um, like you said, with the too much fat, like I yeah. can get crazy with avocado, too much nuts, too much cheese, mm-hmm. you know, all of those things. If you really look at it, it's just eating, even if it's this much more, than what well, you were eating before. It adds up over time. If you're overeating a little bit every day, you gain weight slowly every day and it adds up over time. And you might think I didn't do anything different. What happened? Well, maybe you had that much extra, you know, that, that you didn't need and you just cut it back a little bit. You can still have very delicious food. I'm not saying that you have to like diet or over restrict what you're eating. Cause you know, I haven't, I haven't felt like I was dieting since I started intermittent fasting, but that doesn't mean that I eat without, restraint. You know, I still have discipline and I stop when I'm satisfied and I make choices. I make grown up choices and I prioritize the vegetables and the high quality foods and, um, and I take care of my body and my body takes care of me. Mm, And I love what you said about the window creep, because it's Mm -hmm. literally like when you only increase your window by 30 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour, you kind of go, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. And and you're really not, right? right? It's an adding that extra hour and it really does make a big difference. So, it adds up. Yeah. Yes. Well, anything that I haven't asked you that you want to make sure that you tell listeners today? Well, not really. I mean, you know, I could talk about this for hours. So <laughs> we'll have to have you back on for sure. I guess you know, the main thing is, you know, fast clean. And we also, in my community, we like to say fast clean and release expectations because, you know, the, you don't want to have to feel like you're fighting your body. Your body, you know, responds to whatever you do and realize that you and your body are a team. And you're working together. And if you feel like you're having to fight your body into submission, you're never going to do well with that. That's never going to work. You have to figure out what your body needs. Also, as your body changes, like through menopause, you're going to have to change too. You have to work with the body you have. Like the body you have 
you know, when you're 53 is not the same body you had when you're 23. I mean, it isn't, it's not the same body. And you know, you could be mad about that, but that isn't going to help. Instead, you have to just say, okay, well, this is the body I've got. I'm going to have to not eat as much as I ate when I was 23 and that's okay. And, and know that your, your goal is to work with your body, feel good in your body and to be healthy. And that's not all about the number on the scale or the number in your pants or whatever. You need to find a a lifestyle that lets you live in a way that you can feel good in your body, no matter what that body size is for you. It's where your body wants to stay instead of fighting your body to behave and weigh a certain thing or be a certain size. That's a losing proposition. Mm, I love it. Well, it's always a pleasure talking with you. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. All right. Well, I am. Um, I've left Facebook. So if you want to find me, jenstevens.com. Jen is G-I-N Stevens with a P-H. And I have a community that you can join, but it's off of Facebook, which actually makes it really, really nice because um, everyone who's there, I mean, it's a, it's a paid community, but it's like $9.99 a month to be a part of this community. But apparently people who are um, going to start up trouble. Let's just say you're on Facebook. You know what I mean by yes, that? I do. Anybody who's going to come in and like start up trouble, they're not going to pay $9.99 a month. So what we have is an amazing group of people with shared goals who are kind to one another. And we, we you know, just encourage one another, even when someone's having a hard time, when someone's succeeding at something, you know, we're there for you no matter what. So you can find that at jenstevens.com slash community. Jen is G-I-N Stevens with a P-H. And you can also listen to intermittent fasting stories. Um, We have, gosh, what did I, the 280 episodes I've recorded now of that podcast. So there, and they come out twice a week, every Tuesday and every Thursday, you can hear an intermittent fasting story um, with someone just like you, who is an intermittent faster, and they share how they tweaked it till it was easy and what what their successes have been and what their challenges are. And um, listen to that. I love it. Well, you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.